Welcome to my budget deck channel where I try to make decks as cheap and playable as possible. So if this is something you'd be interested in, then why not subscribe? Today with the, well, I don't want to say new because this deck has been out for quite a while, but I don't think I've ever really run into it. And there might be a good reason for that one, but now we have two more cards, two more good cards as well. They're not going to make this deck insanely playable, crazy uh, competitive, but they make this deck uh, quite a bit better. So there's at least that one and I have tried to come up with a version that is somewhat budget friendly which isn't too easy because I know the deck doesn't really need the extra deck and the deck doesn't have that many expensive main deck cards but you kind of sadly have to be playing all of them so yes this is what I could come up with it's a bit different than certain other variants because we do lose a lot of consistency by not playing certain cards and uh, I'll be talking about what you can be doing, how you could be changing this up as well and why there is some one or two kind of fairly strange cards in here as well. So let's start off with the classic one Ash Blossom, uh, one Infinite Impermanence just to have hand traps because these kind of decks are a bit annoying going second. I mean you just end with a five set pass anyway but there's not that much you can do from that onwards because well field wipes aren't that easy to come by so Yes, we have uh, to substitute for this one. Um, I decided to go for the double amazement ambassador uh, Bufo because, well, usually you want to be running one to none, but this one, uh, this version needs a few more uh, amazement, not traction monsters, because we need to be able to special summon out one of the new boss monsters, and for that you need to control an amazement monster. So very, very important that we have a few in the deck, and since we have to cut the next card down to two, just for budget reasons, obviously you want to be playing three. Um, yeah, I've thought about maybe let's put another monster in. And the effect of this card isn't like awful in the grind game, because with this you can obviously recur stuff, you can uh, annoy your opponent, especially with the new attraction trap. This can be not quite devastating, but it can definitely be somewhat annoying at least, and it's not too hurtful. Plus the quick effect that you can target one of your attraction traps that's equipped to a monster, equipped to an amazing monster you control, or one face up monster your opponent controls, can come in handy from time to time as well. So don't be sleeping on that one. Next up we have Amazement Attendant uh, Comica. We really need this card at three, theoretically, but in the end, a lot of the time you get like Ash, Failure, Imperm, whoever, and the effect doesn't really work out that much anyway. So do we really need it at three? This is just a two for budget reasons. If you just picked up some of these cards and you only have two, then this can be coming in handy. Then you don't have to be crafting that much because this, I think, is in the new pack in comparison to, for example, this one. So I decided, let's bump this up. Maybe you can play a bit with the ratios. Whatever cards you have, you can play. Uh, I feel like it's kind of important to have a certain amount of consistency in this deck other than that yeah this card is a searcher classic uh, you name it normal summon this card and then you can do stuff plus you have the quick effect that you can target one of your traps that's equipped to monster equip it to one of the other ones uh, which can be very helpful from a time to time now a card that um, usually wasn't that good but now is a lot better because we want to have amazement monsters on board and this card is generally quite nice because you can reveal one uh, attraction trap, which we have better ones now, so we actually do play a few more, and special summon this card from your hand, so then you can send one attraction trap from your hand or face up field to the graveyard and set one directly from your deck, which is quite nice because that is how we get the search off a lot of the time. So this adds us more consistency to our build that we usually wouldn't have all that much because we don't run uh, three of this one. So this could help us with that as well. And adds another body to the board if you want to be going into some extra deck stuff. There's not that much, but uh, yeah, it exists. Now two of this boss monster, the old one, the, the good one, the other one's the, well, not good one in terms of playing, but good one in terms of that's the happy one. Okay, I'll call it the happy one. I'll call that the angry one. For now and um, because this one you can special summon it's a bit like multi faker you can special summon it if a trap card has been activated and uh, then it has a lot of different effects this one it's a bit counterintuitive because this effect is theoretically good if you like a go a second kind of grindy kind of deck which i mean all trap decks are kind of grindy decks because then you can pop stuff by banishing traps from your graveyard but obviously if you go first that effect does uh, the bare minimum um, but it's not too bad to have this card in your hand because with this card in your hand you can then if your opponent normal summons or special summons a monster you can target one of these phase up monsters that control and equip one attraction trap from your deck to, um, to that target so that is very very helpful as well and we have a shortcut into getting into this card now as well with this one if you control an amazement monster you can special summon this card from your hand and then you can add one amazement family faces which i'll be talking about in a second don't worry from your deck or graveyard to your hand and doing your opponent's turn that's the reason for why i play this card at two we have the issue that 
Uh, you can target one other effect monster on the field with more than zero attack. Shuffle this card into the deck, and if you do special summon one amazement administrator, Arlecchino from your deck. Mm, if it said deck, hand, or graveyard, this card would have been amazing. Then I could have cut down one of this. I might even play a third one of that one, but like this, uh, the budget ratio that you want to be doing is probably two and two, potentially. I tried out with like one of them and two of them. It still works, but obviously you'd use a lot of power, and this deck kind of does need a bit of a power boost of this uh, specific card. So yeah, we kind of do want to be running this at two. You can try it out at one if you want to at first, um, still fine, but yeah, you can tell we do need this card at two just for the effect of being able to summon it from the deck, because there's there's no other ways of getting this card back into the deck, so a bit problematic from time to time. So you could argue one of them is fine because you not really be able to use its uh, effect more than once if you already drew into one of them. So yeah, you could argue that one of them is fine anyway. And now the big elephant, the big cyber Eltanen in the room, we have this card in here. And there's one good reason for it because I felt like a lot of the time, I didn't really know what to do if I'm monster responsive on board. Most of the attraction uh, trap card effects that you equip to your monster aren't as good as the ones to uh, the ones to attach to your opponent. Oof. Uh, some of them are, but uh, not all of them. And uh, then I thought, well, what else can we do? We don't really have that much graveyard recursion anyway. And these two are searchable and light machine monsters. So we can banish all light machine monsters from your field and graveyard. And if this card is special summoned, send all other face-up monsters on the field to the graveyard. Send all is very, very strong, and that can be quite nice in a granny deck. Obviously, you can cut this card for any good stuff card, for any good hand trap, for any uh, more copies of this one, for example, or whatever you want to be playing. If you want to be playing evenly matched, you can do that as well. You can play lots of different things. But I felt like this was a, an interesting tech card for the deck that, yes, I have to admit, might not be the most optimal choice but 100 wanted to include it in this deck profile just because it's a budget deck anyway and uh, it's kind of fun it's kind of fun your opponent doesn't really expect it and it can sway the duel a little bit but it obviously also contributes to a problem that this deck already has which is well you don't really know how to finish your duels because yes you have some monsters but you can look like 2600 attack isn't the craziest and how are you going to finish your opponent? With what damage? Yes, you can steal monsters from your opponent, and you, but relying on that is also a bit annoying, and you have to use two resources for it, and it, it just isn't that great uh, in, in general at finishing and closing out games, so you kind of have to splash it a bit, but I'll be talking about that in the rating section a bit more. We have Pot of Extravagance in here. This is the one that I decided to go with three of uh, for two different reasons. First of all, lots of people that like trap decks will use this card in a lot of different decks. So budget value wise, it's a lot better than running like uh, this card at three and this card at three over uh, a Pot of Extravagance, for example. And since I try to stick around like nine super rares at the max, this is kind of what happened. But yeah, an extra card in a trap based deck is never too bad. And the extra deck for this deck does not matter whatsoever. Now we have one Amazement pr Precious Park. Don't really love the card, but it is searchable in this deck, and it can help you if you go second with certain things, and also it can help you in the long run. Your opponent won't really be dealing with this, so if you draw into one of them at one point, it's not terrible, but it's also not really a good card. So if you want to be playing uh, hand traps and whatnot, and you feel like you're very tight for space, cut this one. It's not that good, but as a one-off that's searchable, it can help you from time to time. The effect to activate the attraction trap the turn was set can be quite nice in the grind game, and uh, also you can recycle certain attraction traps, especially the banished ones, which is quite important because you have the Arlecchino effect, and also that helps you recycling this one in terms of if you need another searcher, and that uh, since you only run one, that could kind of substitute for it a little bit. Meh, not uh, amazing, not, uh, as it says in its name, but it could be uh, played at least. So we have triple amazing time ticket, obviously, because this card is uh, actually amazing, because it helps you search anything. During your opponent's turn, you can set one attraction trap, and it can be directly activated. During your turn, you can add one amazement card from your deck to your hand. Very, very nice searcher, so as a quick play spell. Uh, definitely decent in this deck. Definitely want to be running this at three because even if you draw two of them, you still get two cards because you use it during your turn and then use it again during your opponent's turn. So this is a card that uh, doesn't break as much in your hand as this card, for example, would or this one, because if you draw multiple of this, it doesn't really matter. Triple Lost Wind, you can basically play anything here, but I felt like Lost Wind can help, especially because we can't really beat over a lot of monsters, and in the grind game, this card can be decent. Obviously, there's decks against uh, where this card 
kind of struggles against uh, Fluander Reese is one of the test matches I had, and uh, this card did absolutely nothing, who would have thought? What he talked about infinite impermanence, we have dogmatic punishment because the extra deck doesn't matter, and we can send stuff to the Griever, like the fossil, uh, fossil Machine Skull Wagon, so we have some Spill Trap removal as well in this deck, which can be nice, besides the Attraction Cyclone. Now the card that I'm not quite sure if I should run this at 1 or at 2, because I try to run lots of the Attraction sp um, Traps, and you can already see this card not an attraction trap. Keep this one in mind because all of the effects of your monsters and other cards, they all are going around the it being an attraction trap and this one is not so this one can be potentially a bit bricky and since you can search it with the abomination multiple times uh, from your grave as well if you really want to, this card is uh, probably potentially best at one but i do like it because it helps you finish out games it helps you stealing your opponent's monsters and since we do run quite a lot of ways to get our attraction traps back from the graveyard with this one or just have lots of them in general i thought two might be a good ratio because you kind of sometimes want to be drawn into it so in total you kind of have like four uh, in here and then you can always set it up in the first turn you lose a lot of resources on this one but yeah with the attack gain as funny as it sounds and the monster steal it uh, can be crucial to the deck's uh, playstyle and actually finishing games, so I thought two might be nice. Very, very difficult though. We obviously want to be maxing out on this one, but uh, since we can't, I put some more in that you usually don't want to be maxing out on, just to fill up the attraction slots, because we do need quite a few attraction traps, and this one is one of the better ones because it can uh, get rid of spell traps and it can search you stuff, so that's also not too bad. We have one of the Maze uh, Attraction Rapid Racing in here. It's not really a good card, but it is uh, decent in certain matchups. And one of them might even be Kashira because you can increase the equipped monsters level by one so you can stop them from going into rank seven. Isn't that crazy? I know. It's disruption somehow. And I guess this all card also gets rid of, uh, consistently gets rid of things uh, in your opponent's graveyard, so this can be helpful if you're playing against tier limits still or any of the uh, Ishizu kind of decks, so theoretically it's not too bad to run in this specific meta at the moment, but obviously it's not an amazing trap as the name might want you to believe. We have the attraction Horror House, a card that is definitely decent, it has a few issues, um, if you want to be using the target effect monster and negate it, a bit problematic because it only really works on effects that aren't on summon, because if it's on summon then you can't really use it unless already at the start of the turn you flip this card up and put it on one of your monsters, which you can do, but it just televises your place a little bit. But then in the end, so do monster negates, like negates in monster form, because your opponent also knows you have that, so what difference does it really make? So you can still use this, but you can't use it as much as a surprise as you might want to use it. So I'll keep that one in mind, but in general, very, very, very strong card. And you can book of ruin opponent's monsters, but obviously then you lose this card and get sent to the graveyard because then it can't be equipped to the monster anymore. So uh, that is also something. And sadly, you can only do it with the one that is equipped. So that's uh, how Konami tried to not, well, I want to say balance this card, but I don't think it would have made much of a difference if it wasn't like this. Then the card that usually only be wanting to be running at one or two, but since we have uh, not enough of this one, I decided to bump this one up to three. Plus, this one for some reason doesn't say it's only once per turn, which is uh, a bit strange. Like, this is one of the only ones that isn't a hard once per turn, because look, these ones all say hard once per turn. This one for some reason doesn't. I don't know if that's a mistake or if that's uh, what it's supposed to be, but uh, never had to use it twice in one turn so far, so it never really came up. We have uh, once per, oh, here's the once per turn this time. So you can use technically both of them uh, at least once. Or well, this one doesn't even say once per turn. So it should be, it should theoretically with how the card text is work multiple times. And the good effect is if you have it on your opponent when the equipped monster activates its effect, return it to the hand, can be quite nice against certain extra deck monsters as well. And can be quite nice if you go second in combination with the precious part, because then your opponent has to really think about when they want to be using certain negates from the extra deck. But also the first effect, not terrible, but also not great can be got quite nice to stall out the game a little bit as well plus if they are equipped to your monsters then you can usually keep them for a bit longer 
Talking about the new cart now, the Thrill Train, a very, very nice attraction. We have this one that is mainly for the fact that you can banish the equipped monster until the end phase, can be stopping your opponent's combos, and then this card goes obviously to the graveyard, which can be helpful, can be problematic. It's uh, quite nice in combination with the ambassador and can be quite nice with the administrator to banish it to then pop some cards. The first effect that you change the equipped monster's battle position and then your opponent chooses one attraction to trap in your graveyard and set it to your field isn't bad. If you want to stop your opponent from attacking, for example, and you don't really need to banish the monster during the end phase because they already have done all their combos, then this can be helpful to gain more, some more resources. And you keep, um, well, you don't, uh, you don't swap your opponent's monster, you swap your own monster, but like if you want to protect yourself or whatever, uh, that can be somewhat helpful. Although the thing is, your monsters don't really have that high of a defense position, so usually you lose this card then and replace it by some other attraction trap that your opponent chooses, so it's not the best effect, but it can be helpful from time to time. If your opponent doesn't have a way to get rid of your monsters, this can then provide, well, at least some form of a grind game. So we have that one. Cards to mention here, obviously, we want to be playing some hand traps, Ash Blossom, Maxi, even Effect Failure works fine, Infinite and Permanence. Those are cards that are genuinely good and can help you win games. Three of this one, three of this one should be a given. Other budget cards you could be trying out, Compulse or Blight Obliteration is a card because a lot of the time you will not be keeping these monsters on board anyway because either you're going to exodic monsters or your opponent gets rid of them very quickly anyway. And you can be lucky to not hit them because they're level 7, so potentially if you're very, very, very lucky, you have the, the chance that uh, you wipe the entire board when your opponent tries to build up the board and you even keep your cards on board, but didn't really want to be uh, trying it out that much. Um, but it is a possibility, it is a possibility. It's a bit better than Torrential because with this one you can activate it at any time and you can at least hope that your board survives it a little bit, but obviously then it doesn't work against like Link Monsters and so on and so on and so on. Things like evenly matched to, well, get evenly matched again after your opponent uh, burned through all of your back row can be helpful. Theoretically, you can be playing there can be only one, but I think that harms the effect of the abomination because I don't think because they're both psychic, I don't think you can then use the effect to summon this one because at the time you have this one on board and so you can't even activate it because this would summon a psychic monster. I think this is how it works, or at least this is how it should work in my personal opinion. Don't really know. For the extra deck we have a triple fossil machine just mainly because we have Pot of Extravagance so this one can be quite nice with punishment. We have one Oz just for the attack stats uh, because I only had two five-headed dragons and why not put one Oz in here. We have uh, Malevolence in just to get rid of certain cards on your opponent's field. Uh, same for Asophiel and Asophiel quite nice if you actually give cards back to your opponent's hand. Uh, because then they might trigger the administrator again because when this card uh, with a monster is normal special summoned then you can equip stuff to it from your deck again so theoretically giving stuff back to the hand isn't as bad in this deck that uh, it might be in other ones and then triple pit knight or you can play any kind of link stuff in here uh, you want because uh, lots of it will be banished by extravagance anyway and this one you can theoretically go into with these two uh, for example and then you have some form of uh, removal because this card triggers or some form of effect negation and when this card then triggers then you can use pit knight and then you can negate monster effects and so on and so on and so on uh, plus you can always activate the effect of this card at will because this is a quick effect so it works somewhat decent with the pit knight's effect if you place it in the zone right next to it the only problem with pit knight is you can't really actually be using it, never mind, I just realized that you um, have the issue that it doesn't point downwards and link monsters go only in the X and monster zone. So uh, yeah, little oopsie here, we will be fixing that at one point, but it doesn't really matter. You can play basically anything else, play uh, the good old Geonator Resonator in here and we are fixing this uh, right this second. Oops. Sometimes you only realize that. That already shows you how much I actually went into my extra deck in the testing phase. Not at all. Usually everything good gets banished by extravagance. Anyway, let's move to the rating section. And for the power level, the strength of this deck, I would give it like a well, solid 3 out of 5, a lowest 3 out of 5. It's not amazing like its name might suggest, but it's decent. You can play it. It's a bit heavy on going first and it's a bit reliant on you drawing the exact right cards to actually function. It's the same with like a lot of different trap decks. If you draw only trap cards, you usually don't really have that much. If you draw only your monsters, you can't really do all that much. So uh, it is a bit problematic from time to time, but there's different ways. It has some consistency cards. And if you upgrade this deck, it will be like a solid deck to play, but not really like the strongest of any kind. So I feel like a low-ish three out of five sounds absolutely fair, but it could be a bit better than it is in the end still, even with the new additions to the deck. 
talking about consistency, well, I would give this like a decent three out of five. The problem with it, I would give it a four out of five because it can't be very consistent, but we do lack some consistency cards. We could have played three cards more, two um, of the trap card and one of the monster, and then this deck would be fairly consistent like this. It still has hands where it draws like to, well, some of the same traps then, and only full of traps, only full of monsters, because uh, that's just what it is. Uh, so yeah, I would say like a good-ish 3 out of 5. It's not bad uh, consistency-wise, but it's also not amazing. And also, hand traps like Ash Blossom, obviously, uh, cripple this deck a tiny bit. And then last but not least, we have budget value. Well, I would say budget value-wise, this is for me a low 4 out of 5. The only issue with it, the one is that the fact is it's not that great. It's not that good of a deck in general, so that's where the budget value gets taken away. But otherwise, it runs uh, pop, um, the pot card, obviously, so this is good for any kind of deck. And the other cards, this archetype can be splashed into certain other trap decks because uh, it harmonizes with trap effects. It has lots of normal traps that works for a lot of different decks. This, uh, nothing limits it to special summoning anything specific. So you can plonk it into lots of different ones that also don't really stop you from special summoning certain cards. It has effects that special summon during your opponent's turn as well. So theoretically you can, but you do have to run somewhat of a light of uh, attraction spells if you uh, traps if you really want to, but lots of them are searchable as well. So theoretically you can be playing this in other different trap decks and I will try to make it happen, although the problem is that the Arlequinos are ultra rare, so uh, quite difficult to find different engines, uh, different trap engines that don't really need that many ultra rares, but it exists. So this might be something that happens eventually, but uh, not at this point, but you can always do it. So I feel like that rating should be fair. Let's move to the one replay that I can present. This is going to be a short one because, you know, new decks and testing can be quite difficult to get replays that actually showcase what you want to be showcasing. Some uh, replays are some games you win because of the back of like one specific card. Sometimes your opponent breaks, sometimes your opponent is just super oppressive. Like one of the games was me against Flanderese being hit by Ash Blossom, evenly matched and full flu combo. Eh, not all that easy to go up against and we don't really learn anything from that, but there is power cards in this game that just shut down decks by just playing that one specific card. And then there's archetypes that are just better than this one, which is not a big surprise, especially not if you watch the rating section. Then you should know uh, what I think about uh, how good this deck is. We have a fairly decent hand, actually. No duplicates, uh, I want to say, and we have access to our Abomination, a card that you really want to be seeing. So obviously what I'm going to be doing is normal summon this card first, uh, search out the trap card. I decided to go for the other disruption, so I have multiple different disruptions here. I could have gone for the searcher as well, but since we already had this one that can get us into the other administrator, I didn't really think we needed to search another monster, but it would have been uh, somewhat nice to do so. So in the end, could have done that as well if you wanted to. Then set normal cards, uh, adding this card from our deck to our hand and adding this card to our field presence so we have lots of uh, options here you can already see this is quite oppressive or can be quite oppressive if you play it well and we all know especially people are subscribed to my channel that is something i don't excel at playing things out well not really where i usually go and uh, yeah they go for the whole uh, cash dr unicorn and i thought oh let's try out this one here but I probably should have just gone for Lost Wind here in case they go into the extra deck, although they only have three cards, so um, they probably play something else, and there's a reason for it, you'll see why that might be the case um, in a second, but probably would have been better to Lost Wind here, so have this effect for like anything else they normal summon at this point, so I thought maybe it's better to do this and then just negate the effect when they try to use it, maybe they don't read these cards, maybe they don't know them, and that's exactly what kind of happens. I equip it to my monster, then negate the effect when they activate the effect because it's not an unsummon effect. They have Ignis Seed and they sacrificed True King's Return. Very interesting one. Uh, True Draco in combination with Kashtira. I mean, I guess it works. Kashtira doesn't need, need, need the extra deck. They have enough good effects, so uh, this can be quite devastating, especially the whole extra deck destruction effects and whatnot. So they, they kind of harmonize together at least a little bit. Uh, there might be a version that consider playing on my channel as well. I'll be looking into that for sure. What can we do about this one? Well, we can banish it till the end phase. We could technically steal it as well if you want to uh, use the effect of this card because now we can use the quick effect to equip this card to like this one, for example, or this one, and then we steal it with the amazement family phases. So there's that. We have lots of different options here that we can be using. We can't use Lost Wind. Uh, 
use, well, obviously, and now they use the True King's Return, why wouldn't they? They tribute it off, and with that one, I can dodge out of it, because this is a quick effect, and I can go into the other administrator, obviously they gain a card from that, sadly, but that is how it is. I decide to banish this card for some reason, because I wanted them, because I have this card on board, and I wanted to clear my space, uh, because I wanted to be able to use the effect of this, and I knew they have cards that get them the banished monsters back, because I've played Kashtira a little bit, and I thought, of course they will have this, then they'll summon it back, and then I can get another attraction trap from my graveyard, um, from my deck to my field, and then if they go to the graveyard, I can pop more stuff during the next turn, and that was kind of a thought, but I was a bit greedy, and uh, yes, didn't really want to be doing this, shouldn't really have been doing this, but it didn't really matter, and they did have the, the spell card that gets it back to them, so there's that, now I can activate the effect of this card, and they su um, surrender to you, because they felt like they uh, didn't have enough cards in hand that dealt with my whole board and they know if they can clear the Harlequino I will have some stuff in the graveyard and I will be able to clear the entire board and from that point onwards it will be very 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 hard for them to stage any form of comeback. Hope you learned a little bit from this, you hope you learned what to not do, hope you learned that with trap decks every single trap activation really matters, you really have to find the exact sweet spot to hit stuff with. And this is why the whole oh yeah just flip trap uh, isn't as good, I mean obviously floodgate decks are a bit different, you literally just activate it, but trap decks can be so difficult to play because it really, it's a bit like the old school Yu-Gi-Oh where, where turns just lasted a bit uh, shorter but the games lasted a bit longer. And uh, yeah, you have to really make sure that you hit the exact right play because otherwise your opponent can still go off and you just lose resources for absolutely nothing. So game knowledge is key with trap decks in my personal opinion. Hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, but most importantly, I hope you have a nice day.